Hello everybody to another episode of Getting APIs to Work. Today we will look at HTTP structured fields. We will look at what they are, how they work, and why they are important if you are using APIs and how you can already use them today. Let's briefly look at where they come from. When you look at HTTP APIs, one way to look at them, and that's something I like to say, is to look at them as a language. As a language that defines the way how two interconnected parties talk to each other. And this language uses a whole bunch of building blocks. And those building blocks are defined by HTTP itself and by some additional specifications around that. There is, I think for some, a surprising number of these building blocks around, and this number is constantly growing. It's something that I like to collect and list on this web page that I've created that's called Web Concepts. So right now, this website is listing 35 different concepts that matter for APIs. And for those 35 different concepts, there are 823 different values. And one of those concepts are HTTP header fields. And you may be surprised to learn that there are 215 different header fields. This means there are many header fields to work with. Not every API uses all of them. In fact, most APIs probably will use a rather small number of them. But generally speaking, as an API practitioner, there is a rather large set of HTTP header fields to work with. And now when you look at what an HTTP header field does, it is something like a micro vocabulary. It has a very specific purpose. It allows you to communicate information and this information is represented in a certain way. And that representation then is a syntax that you will find in a header field. Let's look at a very simple example. And a simple example is something, for example, like the age header field. So there is an age header field defined here. And when you look at the definition of it in the specification, you will see that the age header field is just a number of seconds. So it's just an integer that is really easy to process. So maybe in that case, you're thinking, why would I need any additional help with that? But now let's look at a different header field. And for this, we can look at the accept header field. And the accept header field is quite a bit more complicated. So when we look at the accept header field and the definition of the accept header field, you can see that the accept header field already is defined in a more complex way. And there are many different HTTP header fields that are defined like this. They are defined in a way that is structured and that is something that you need to work with if you want to use that header field. And then the question becomes, how do I do this? And until recently, the answer always was, well, you have to read the spec, you have to understand how that header field works, and then you have to implement that header field, meaning you have to parse the header field value if you want to read the header field, or you have to serialize the header field value if you want to write the header field. But it was something that was very specific for each individual header field. And this is where structured headers come in. I like to say something like the future is structured, meaning that while HTTP standardization was going on, people started realizing that they are reinventing these micro syntaxes every single time they define a new header field. And that is rather ineffective. It also means that people have to write these different parsing and serialization things. So people said, this could be better. And this is exactly how structured fields enter the picture. There was work that was done a little while ago. It's a stable RFC now. And this RFC defines a shared model for how HTTP header fields are defined. And this means that instead of each HTTP header field having to do that by themselves, instead you can have HTTP header fields that all follow this convention of using the structured header field models. It's a rather simple model. We won't go into any details here. 
It has lists and individual values, a couple of data types, what you would expect, I would say, from this kind of activity. And there has been the attempt to make this structured field syntax as similar to established practices as possible. And in fact, there also are ongoing activities to redefine some of the existing header fields in this new structured header field model. This is not possible for all header fields because some of them just came up with something that doesn't fit this new model. But this means that you will see more and more HTTP header fields using that specific structured field model. Now, what does this all mean? To some extent, you could say, well, things are working fine for me. What do I need to know about this? But consider this. More and more HTTP header fields are being added over time. There's always like some header fields that are in the standardization pipeline. And again, there are some that will be retrofitted probably to that syntax. So in the long run, as a developer, you will have to work more and more with structured header fields and it will make life easier because instead of having to parse these micro syntaxes with having to parse a comma, a semicolon, an equal sign, and is it quoted or not quoted and these kind of things, you can just use a library that does that for you. There already are quite a number of existing libraries that you can check out, probably one in your preferred language as well. And this means that if you work with an HTTP header field that uses structure field syntax, please don't write your own code. Instead, look for a library, use the library to parse or serialize values that will make your life easier. And it also means that your implementation will be more future proof. It probably will be more robust because you don't have to code all of this. That is code that probably has passed already a good number of tests, so you can rely on it. And that means that in the long run, more and more header fields will be working that way and less and less header fields will need specific hand-coded support, so to speak. And this is all there is to structured fields. It's, it's not that complicated, I think, but it's an interesting development. It's this special niche of, we talk a lot in HTTP, so why not base all these conversations on a shared model of the individual values that we exchange? And it's one of these things that over time have created this community consensus that yes, maybe there's a better way to do this. And now we have structured header fields and maybe as a little thing to also look forward to, there's another ongoing standardization activity that looks at how to use those structured header fields and then encode them in a binary way. Because then these structured field values then can also be used in HTTP2 and HTTP3 and they can be used to make the exchange of HTTP more efficient. And because HTTP header fields use these structured fields, there can be, again, a shared way how you make these things binary to help with more efficient encoding. So as you can see, this whole thing really is good going forward. It takes a little bit of a transition period and that's the time we're in right now. But I think it's important to at least be aware of it. It's rather simple. You don't have to be scared of structured fields. It's not that complicated. If you want to understand more about structured fields, I encourage you to really check out the spec. It's not that complicated. That will help you to better understand what they're doing. And with that, I'm done for today. Thanks a lot for listening. Have a great day and until next time, bye.